how do I prescribe exercise for someone with pain? This is a question I get quite a lot. We have really clear parameters for things like strength, power, and endurance. But what if I'm using exercise for pain itself? There are so many ways in which exercise can be used for pain outside the changes we see to the musculoskeletal system. So let's look at these briefly. Exercise has a big impact on the autonomic and peripheral nervous system, which can directly modify pain and the pain experience. Firstly, we have the endogenous opioid system, which impacts the threshold of nociception centrally and peripherally. We then have non-opioid systems that can either increase or decrease synapse excitability, and we have conditioned pain modulation through descending inhibition. Importantly, we also have psychosocial impacts where exercise can enhance self-efficacy, give people a sense of control over their symptoms and their situation, reduce stress, and be an impetus for social engagement. And the list goes on. So it's ideal for us to not just think about the cardiovascular and musculoskeletal of ex exercise, but also the big impact it can have on pain and someone's pain experience. The role of exercise on pain is multifaceted, and it's really just due to physical impairments that we can measure. Therefore, it can be effective for both acute and chronic pain, even if we see no change in measurable physical impairments. So where do we start? Well, this depends on what challenges your patient has. Exercise doesn't just impact their pain, but it can give them confidence to move more and importantly, reduce secondary factors like fear avoidance, bracing, and loss of mobility associated with pain. So here's a few key questions to consider about the patient you're working with. Does the patient have things that they have already found helpful? This might be things like positions or relieving factors, such as standing, walking, or swimming. If someone's already found that useful, then we should encourage it and stick with it. Maybe find ways in which they can incorporate it more into their day and let them know the benefits. Strategies that are self-generated can mean higher self-efficacy and better control of their pain. How irritable are their symptoms? With high levels of pain and irritability, often less is more. Frequent position changes and exercise that is frequent and short in duration is usually tolerated best. Breaking up short walks to five minutes every hour or two, for example, might be much more helpful than two 20-minute walks each day. What are the goals of the patient or the functional tasks that they need to return to? Matching exercise to what your patient is gradually returning back to can be a big confidence builder. If they're wanting to return to strength training in the gym, for example, then using exercise in this environment can help motivation towards that goal. But most importantly, what does your patient enjoy doing and what will they stick to? We should help guide the patient toward exercise that they want to do and what they can fit into their day. For example, we shouldn't suggest swimming, for example, to someone who has no access to a pool. So that's physical activity. What about specific exercises for pain? Firstly, let's acknowledge that often the exact choice isn't the most important thing. If someone has high levels of pain, we can try and start in positions of ease. This might be in supine or four-point kneeling for low back pain, for example, which can be great options for someone to be able to relax and get moving easily. We want the patient to focus on restoring range of movement using slow, controlled movements with normal breathing. And if needed, it can be helpful to use exercise in and around the time of the day where symptoms are most manageable, which might be earlier in the day or around their medication use. So let's look at a clinical example. Jeff has acute low back pain that he's had for three days with no major mechanism of injury. He's currently off work due to the pain and is just staying inside the house. His pain is aggravated with any prolonged position, especially sitting, and is eased with standing up and walking around for brief periods. He has pain on all movements of his lower back, but on repeated movements into extension, his symptoms are reduced. His pain is well localized to L5S1. 
So my goals with Jeff, let's theorize, are centered on reducing his pain. I want to start to restore his range of movement and certainly reduce the threat associated with movement to allow him to be more confident with moving his back. Jeff's goals are likely around reducing pain and being able to return to work. So here's some questions I might ask Jeff to work out a plan of how exercise can be helpful to manage his acute low back pain. What does Jeff have access to? Let's say he's got access to a pool in his apartment complex, a gym, and spaces for walking. When Jeff returns to work in the next day or two, does he have a private space he can access to do exercises with his back? Let's say that he doesn't. So let's look at what might work with Jeff on day one. As Jeff has access to a pool, this can be a good option to get him moving, especially while he's off work with acute low back pain. At least once a day of swimming or water walking or even just moving in the water would be great, even if it's just for 10 minutes. Walking is helpful for him already, so let's do more of that. 10 minutes, two to three times a day is probably realistic, especially with his early return to work. I might couple this with frequent changes of position, short periods in standing, and moving around the office. Let's look at some specific exercises. As Jeff is better with extension-based movements, um, repeated movements into extension, such as in prone, pushing up onto his hands, may be helpful. So we can try these in the clinic. Three to four times a day in prone or in standing if tolerated would be good. While he's at home, we can also work on slowly getting his back moving to restore his range of movement, reduce pain, and get more confident with moving. So a cat camel positions or pelvic tilts and four-point kneeling, supine lifting his knees to his chest, supine rocking knees side to side, and even four-point kneeling going into a child's pose can be considered when doing this to get his back moving, even just for a minute and a few times a day. When Jeff returns to work, he might not have access to spaces for these exercises. So perhaps pelvic tilting and sitting, flattening his back against the wall could be great ideas to maintain some movement with his lower back. So let's summarize around using exercise for pain. Exercise can help pain in ways far more widely than the musculoskeletal system. Even though it might feel a bit generic, our exercise can be really individualized around the person's pain, their preferences, what they can tolerate, and what they have access to. Exercise for pain can be a range of things, from physical activity through to specific localized exercises. So we've always got a range of options to work with.